كاننا محكومون بالامل وما يحدث اليوم لا يمكن ان يكون نهايه التاريخ One of Sadullah Wannous's best-known phrases comes in the speech he delivered for UNESCO's World Theatre Day. It says, we are condemned to hope. Such hope sprang from bitterest moments, personal and collective, leaving everlasting traces on his imagination as a creative dramatist. Condemned to hope, when news characters emerge from their ashes to attest to the power of self-will against bleak circumstances. All the masajins know the joy of the sign that you have to do. Now, before I ask your head with a knife, the sword will be removed. Sadala Wanous was born in 1941 in the village of Hussain al-Bahar near Tartus where he received his early education. The village overlooks the Mediterranean surrounded by green hills and bushy meadows. The beautiful landscape nurtured his early fancies providing him with sweet memories of motherly tenderness and love. It was the unity of childhood imagination with Mother Nature. His father and mother speak of his early formative days as being full of dreams. His mother narrates how one day he came to her and began describing a dream he saw the previous night, suggesting his innate propensity for artistic creativity. Wanous studied journalism in Cairo during the 60s when Jamal Abdel Nasser was a political force in the Arab world. The Nile gave our dramatist a new vision of the Arab society and civilization. His aspiration for Arab unity grew stronger. Back in Damascus, he dwelled in a small apartment at the heart of the city, a space that would allow him to observe the daily life of ordinary people. His home library overlooks the ancient alleys of the city. His own bedroom seems to be floating on busy, noisy streets, allowing him to capture the mundane cadences of workers going to work, drivers shouting and cursing, students going to schools. As an intellectual, he worked as editor of the art and culture sections of the Syrian paper Al Ba'ath and the Lebanese as Safir. In the late 60s, he traveled to Paris, where he studied theater and encountered various current trends and schools. Paris gave him an opportunity to get in touch with world drama, especially the theater of Brecht, which had a great impact upon him. <laughs> هو جحود وخيانة لا تحتملهما روحي وقد يعجلان برحيلي كان علي لو أردت الإجابة أن أضيف إني مصر على الكتابة للمسرح لأني أريد أن أدافع عنه وأقدم جهدي 
كي يستمر هذا الفن الضروري حيا. His career as a playwright had begun in the early 60s with several short one-act plays which were characterized by a display of his fundamental theme, the relationship between the individual and society. Triggered by the Arab defeat of the 1967 war with Israel, political Arabic theater was born. Nexa had resulted in the creation of a new level of awareness among artists and intellectuals. Wanous himself in one of his interviews admits that he felt that he was suffocating, unable to think clearly after the catastrophe. Wanous was among the most highly regarded members of what is known as the 60s generation, whose art was heavily influenced by the Arabs' defeat in the 1967 war. His play, A Night Party for July the 5th, which focused on the underlying causes of the Arabs' defeat, was among the most influential works to emerge in the aftermath of Annexa. In 1969, joined by a group of Blairites, when news called for an Arab festival for theatrical arts to be hosted in Damascus, later realized and attended by dramatists from all over the Arab world. He intended theater to play a more creative role in the process of social and political change. His other powerful plays included Elephant, King of All Times, 1969, The King is the King, 1977, and Hanzala journey from slumber to consciousness, 1978. In the late 70s, Wanous helped establish and later taught at the High Institute for Dramatic Arts in Damascus. He also started Theatre Life magazine, for which he was editor-in-chief for years. In 1982, and in the aftermath of the Israeli siege and the invasion of Beirut, he lived through a period of shock, ceasing to write for a decade. The Israeli invasion proved to be devastating to his nationalist dreams on independence and freedom. He chose silence for 10 years, refusing to take part in literary life as a playwright. Back to writing in the early 90s, Wanous wrote a series of plays no less political than their predecessors, starting with The Rape, 1990, a play about the Arab-Israeli struggle. Since then, he has written Fragments from History, 1994, Rituals of Science and Transformations, 1994, Miserable Dreams, 1995, A Day of Our Time, 1995, and finally, Mirage Epic 1996. Staged 
for the first time in English by the American University of Beirut, Rituals of Science and Transformations made a splash even in a city known for its relatively freewheeling culture. In literary circles, Wanus has long been considered a giant of Arab literature, but his work has rarely been performed in other parts of the world. Generally speaking, Wanus' career can be divided into three phases. The immature plays of his young manhood, which are influenced by European models and generally focus on the social condition of the individual. His middle period, the theater of politicization, when his Marxist politics were the main factor shaping his drama. And his late works, which are characterized by an extraordinary freedom of thought and expression. Wanus's theater was influenced by the key political, social, and cultural developments of his time as he constantly sought to find forms that would express those transformations in dramatic terms. As a body of work, his plays amounted to an argument that Arab society needed to break out of the political and social constraints that kept it locked in place. Confronted by his region's stagnation and powerlessness, Wanus preserved a kind of optimism. The solution, he believed, lay within the Arab world and its citizens. His work illustrates both his success as an artist and his failure to unleash the social transformation for which he yearned and looked for. He drew inspiration from both traditional Arabic culture like al hakawati sagas and some mystical themes and rituals and from modern artistic forms that impressed him during his studies in France. He sought to weave traditional Arab themes and characters into modern westernized forms. His drama was praised throughout the Arab world for its powerful candor about the Arabs' political feelings. He was a socially engaged and committed author who was highly regarded not only in Syria but throughout the Arab world. The King is the King, for example, recounts the story of a beggar who accidentally winds up on an Arab throne and is immediately hailed as a savior. In 1996, Wanus was selected by UNESCO and the International Institute of Theatre to present the year's address to the World Theatre community during its celebration of International Theatre Day on March 27. This was the first selection of an Arab writer since the organization started this tradition in 1963. Wanus' struggle with his illness left a tragic touch on his spirit. His medical checks and later hazardous chemotherapy to cure cancer proved self-exhausting. Inside hospitals, he would meet other patients and attend to their suffering. The whole atmosphere was captured in his late plays. On May 15, 1997, he died of cancer, a disease he had resisted for five years. Prior to that, Syrian government had sent him to Paris for medical treatment. His funeral was a national event. Artists, readers, friends, family members mourned his death. His tomb in his native town, Hussein al Bahar, has become a visiting site, attracting admirers from all over the world. The news of his death were broadcasted on local Arab and international media and TV channels.
Wanu spent his life articulating a critique of authoritarianism, religious hypocrisy, and social repression. Up until his death, he was convinced that his plays were laying the groundwork for a complete resurrection of Arab society towards a new dawn of modernization and secularism.